Hi there, Sandra here from Create in Spain. First of all, let me say if I sound a bit hoarse or sniffy, please excuse me because the jacaranda trees are in full bloom here in Spain at the moment and that's guaranteed to set my hay fever off. So unfortunately, that's what happens at this time of year. Okay, I'm using Shortcuts a lot 4.026, which as of today, which is the 26th of May, oh, isn't that clever? Uh, happens to be the latest version. And Craft Edge have been really, really nice. I've been contacting them every now and again with ideas for new features that they can put in. And one of the ones that I asked for, they have put in for me, so thank you very much. And it comes underneath the shape tool. And if I click on this to get my menu, we can see down at the bottom there is a spiral. And it's one of those shapes which I absolutely love. Now that doesn't look like much of a spiral because that's get to that in a minute, I've altered my settings. But this is the sort of shape that I love to have to hand for doing flourishes and patterns and so on and so forth. So I'm really pleased that this is here. Now, you might notice these boxes up at the top here and these change the properties of the spiral, but only while you are working in that uh, particular function. If you have the select box, uh, going for you then obviously you can't do it. It's like having the text box open after you go to your selection tool you know you will turn it into an object and you can't alter the, uh, the bits and pieces anymore. So if for example I wanted it to be a spiral I would just go up in the turns. The divergence appears to be the gap between the actual lines themselves so I'm just making the gap between the lines smaller. Okay. And the inner radius will simply take this line and almost like rub it out if it gets bigger. So as you can see, it's eating away that inner line, making the inner radius bigger in this case, or adding some if you make the radius smaller. There we go. And so I'm going to take this right down again. Okay, so I like these particular shapes. I find them really, really handy. Now, what I might do is make that a little longer, so I can do that. And maybe I want to join it up. I'm going to draw out here because you can see things a little more easily. And maybe I'm just going to do some wiggly lines. But then I decide I want to have my nice curvy line join on there. So what I can do is I can select all of that and I go path union. And now if I click off of here and then click back onto here, you can see it's acting as one thing. Now if I go path and go object to path, I'm making sure that this is seen as a path and not an object. Okay, now I can whoops, select it, which would help. I can go to path and I can go to an offset path. And I can choose what sort of offset I want, be it regular or rounded or a beveled offset. And what this will do is it will do a cut line, if you like, all the way around the shape that you have drawn. And I'm just going to click OK. There we are. And if I go to view and just go show outlines only, you can see that it got rid of the original path for me and it's just made this into cut lines. Nice, smoothed out outline of the shape that I wanted. Now this is really handy if you think about things like drawing flourishes, uh, drawing trees, uh, drawing, I don't know, miscellaneous non-geometric shapes basically, um, or non-standard shapes I should say, I'm my shapes are somewhere geometric, but non-standard shapes where you might, for example, decide you want to just draw freehand lines and mix them up with other things. 
it's really quite a handy thing to have because they will all be the same width at the end of the day they will be the same width for you so of course you can take this and then you can do an offset path again if you so want and you can actually do an insert offset so you can do that one click that and I've made it finer so this gives you in conjunction with this nice um, spiral shape gives you lots and lots of wonderful options and it takes relatively little time to do it so if I do say one like that now I'm going to oops I meant to do another one never mind okay click off of there that's one that I wanted and do another one like that another one like that uh, what am I going to do with this? I think I'm going to do another one and I'm going to have that watered. So I'm going to just play around with these and just get some, whoops, some kind of flourishy thing. Come here. Some kind of flourishy thing going. So I'm going to take this one and I think I'm going to flip that one. These flip things are really quite nice. I like the flip function. And this one. I think I'm going to put that one there. And I'm going to put that one there. Now maybe actually, maybe, just maybe. Let's see what happens when I do this. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to go to my path, go to Union, and I'm going to object to path to make sure it's seen as a path. And now I'm going to select that, go to path, and offset and here we go here we get the result oops click on OK and you can see that actually if I put the line thickness up so you can see it better you get some very nice effects without having to do much work at all so it's a lovely tool to play around with now, while I'm here, I just wanted to uh, show you something which you may have seen but completely and totally ignored. Now, we all know that we can use the keyboards on, uh, sorry, the buttons on our keyboard, the keys on our keyboard to shift things to the left and right. But these are relatively large um, movements. Don't forget these little nudge buttons, and I must admit, I have up until recently, tended to ignore them. But they're very handy if you just want to move it in very, very small increments, like so. Now the reason that I mention this at this particular time is because if you're drawing something freehand, uh, let me see, I can do a few little wiggly bits. Okay, now if I zoom into this area, we can see what's going on a bit better. Now if I want to join all these up, um, you can see them a lot easier at the moment because I've got the line set to a thicker line. But if I go back to here, oops, wrong one, and I take this back down, you can tell that that line almost disappears. Actually, I never take it down quite that far. I always use that one. Okay, but if I were to edit, select all, and then go and alter all these. All right, let's put it back down to one turn. You can see that these lines are pretty thin, and they're not easy to line up. Okay, so if I wanted to, what I could do is use my buttons to move things to roughly where I want them to be and then use the nudge 
to actually get it to line up precisely where I want it to be. So that particular function works really well when you are trying to do scrolls and flourishes and the like and you want them to be nicely lined up. So that's why I mention it there. Okay. Now, um, version 4.026, as I said, is the latest one. I did find a couple of versions ago that the software was telling little porky pies. It was telling me that I was up to date with my software and I wasn't. So, just in case that does happen, I would suggest that you go to the Craft Edge website and you put it on your bookmarks and then you check it every now and again, about once a week maybe, um, for any updates. That way you should stay fairly current because Craft Edge have been putting so many new bits and pieces on here. I started using this software back in, well, at the end of... Uh, December because I got my silver bullet for Christmas and I started using the software straight away and at the time I was thinking oh heck what have I got myself into I wish I hadn't but now I actually quite enjoy using this software and I'm not using Inkscape for doing my designs I'm actually designing in shortcut slot and the more that you use it the more that you get to realize exactly how strong a software this is and things which you may think are oh so easy to do in other forms of software can be done quite frequently in shortcuts a lot they are improving it immensely in leaps and bounds and we've gone from something that i thought was horrific to use to something that now not only has printing cut it's got scan to cut and it works really, really well. We can now do all sorts of offsets. We can do different shapes. We can do knockout effects. There are so many things in there that were not there. So what I suggest you do, if you are currently someone who has a very old version of Shortcut Slot, go onto the Craft Edge website, go to the downloads page, and find the latest download. Now, instead of clicking the download button, I can understand you might be reluctant to do that and, and change over. If you click on the highlighted version, the latest version for your system, be it Mac or Windows, it will come up with a box and it explains in that box all the various updates that have been put in of late, all the upgrades that have been done and go back to the very bottom of that box and then read them to the top and you will realize how hard they have worked to improve this software. Now I say this not as someone who is affiliated with Shortcuts Lot Craft Edge in any way or shape whatsoever. I am not affiliated to anybody. I am completely and utterly independent as of this date. So I don't have any vested interest in telling you this or pushing you towards it. I'm just telling you that it is now a pretty good version of software that you can actually design in. And you can import um, PNGs or JPEGs, whatever. You can do traces and so on and so forth. You can import SVGs. You can save as an SVG. So if you do actually design in this, you can save it and basically if you want to share your files, you can share your files. It is not a problem. Okay, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.